and welcome to this demonstration of e-governance solutions based on experience from Estonia, a country widely recognized as one of the world's leading digital societies. This presentation is prepared for you by the members of the Estonian ICT cluster, in partnership with the Estonian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In this demonstration, we look at the different ways a citizen can use public sector services. We start with registering the birth of a child, and then registering the child for school, e-health solutions, business activities, the border crossing system, justice systems, and real estate transactions. At the end of the presentation, we will look at how financial transactions accrue to the state budget management system and how information is exchanged between the systems using an interoperability system called the Unified Exchange Platform. To get started, the citizen will use their unique digital ID number to log into the citizen portal, a central gateway to all public sector services. He or she enters their personal ID number and password and presses login using Smart ID. A verification code is then sent to their mobile phone, and once they verify their identity with the PIN number, they are logged in. The same login procedure is used to access any public sector service in Estonia. As we can see, Michael Williams is logged into the system, and there is information automatically pulled in from the person and marriage registries. Michael is married to Jean Williams, and they have two children. Today, Michael and Jean are celebrating the birth of a new child, and since it was a home birth, Michael needs to register the birth in the person registry. He therefore enters the registry and starts the process by entering his ID code and genes, chooses the gender of the child, the date and time of the birth, and the weight and height of the child. Once this information has been submitted, the birth is registered. We can see information about the new child in the citizen portal. However, the child does not yet have a name. In fact, every new child gets their digital ID before they get their given name. To register the name of their child, Michael once again enters the person registry, where after entering the name for the child, George, the process is completed. Looking at the citizen portal, we can now see that the information about the child is complete. While in the citizen portal, Michael notices that George's sister, Maria, has not been registered for school yet. To register Maria for school, Michael uses the eSchool system. Before Michael can start, though, the administrator of the eSchool system must open the registration process. The eSchool system is used to manage student and teacher information, curricula, class scheduling, grading, and communication between students, teachers, parents, and government officials. The administrator starts the admission process and loads new student information from the population and address registries. It is now possible for Michael to register Maria for school, so he selects one of the three schools presented to him. The school selection is based on where Jean and Michael live, the local school district, and other factors. Michael selects the first option presented, and his choice is automatically sent to the e-school system. The administrator of the system can now see the school selection by the parents and can confirm the selection. In the citizen portal, we can see now that Maria has a designated school. Next, we look at the e-health systems. In this scenario, Michael is taken to the hospital by ambulance, and we can see how patients are registered in the hospital and provided an initial diagnosis in the hospital information system. For expediency, we can see that Dr. Martens is already logged into the system. To get the patient registration started, the doctor enters Michael's ID number. At this point, Dr. Martens has already examined Michael, so he can enter both the registration and the initial diagnosis. He enters that Michael arrived at the hospital by ambulance, selects the diagnosis from the standard classification database. In this case, he selects pneumonia. As a comment on arrival, he enters high fever, difficulty breathing. Once he saves the information, we can see Michael's full medical history, including the diagnosis just provided. In this screen, the doctor can also issue a prescription for Michael. He enters amoxicillin as the medication at a strength of 1000 mg to be taken orally, and the name of the specific medicine from the selection. He enters the prescription date and when the prescription will expire, two weeks from the issue date. He also enters instructions for how the medication has to be taken and once again selects pneumonia from the standard classification of conditions. 
As notes, he enters heavy fluid intake, doctor visit in one week. With all the information entered and the prescription ready, Michael can now collect the medicine from the pharmacy. When Michael goes to the pharmacy, the pharmacist enters Michael's personal ID to see all prescriptions issued to Michael. We can see that Michael has an older prescription, which has already been used, and a new one just issued. When issuing the medicine to Michael, the pharmacist receives information about other medications with the same active ingredient. In this case, the pharmacist will continue with the medicine prescribed, and hopefully Michael will be feeling better soon. Next, we will look at business-related activities. Michael is starting a new company, and he enters the business portal to carry out the registration. We can see that he is an owner of one company already. To start the registration of the new company, he enters the company name, International Logging Limited, and Forestry and Logging is added as its business activity. After entering the starting share capital of the company and the company address, he enters his ID number as the shareholder and declares that he will own 100% of the company with a seat on the company board. Once he saves the information, the memorandum of association is generated, and after he signs it digitally, the company is registered. Coming back to the starting page, we now see that he is the owner of two companies. While already in the system, Michael will also declare taxes for the other company he owns. After entering the tax registry, Michael selects the first of the two companies he owns and chooses the year and quarter he is declaring tax for. As he enters 100,000 euros as the revenue and 80,000 as the cost of goods sold, we can see automatic calculations below for his tax obligations. After entering 5,000 for the business expenses, and a depreciation of 2,000, we see that the total tax due is 1,560 euros. After saving the data, Michael can choose to distribute dividends. And after selecting 50,000 euros, we can see that as he is the sole shareholder, the full amount will be paid out to him. Next, we look at the state border administration. As Michael's companies deal with timber exports, he often needs to cross the state border. If he just drives to the border and waits in the queue, it would take a long time. Fortunately, he can use the queue management system to provide the necessary documents and reserve a time for crossing the border in advance. After he enters the system, he must choose the border crossing point, followed by the queue type. Priority queue is for perishable and dangerous goods, and live queue is without the specified time for crossing the border. As Michael knows the exact time he will be crossing the border, he chooses the pre-reserve queue. After selecting a time for crossing the border, he enters his ID number, name, travel document number, vehicle registration number, and vehicle type. In his case, truck with goods. After verifying the data, the information is automatically available to the border patrol and customs officials. As the final step in the registration, Michael makes a payment to cover the border crossing fee. Let's switch hats and look at the system from the border official's side. He can see information about all cars, trucks, and buses coming to the border in advance. And as we can see, Michael's registration is at the bottom of the list. There is a clipboard icon next to Michael's registration, which means that he has been automatically and randomly selected to go through an in-depth customs check. There are other notifications in the list. A green mark next to the name means that the data comes directly from the population registry. And a red warning means that the person has a criminal record. In one case, we see a notification flag by the ID number. When clicking on detail, the official can see that this person has a history of human trafficking. Armed with this kind of advanced knowledge, the Border Patrol and Customs officials can prepare and schedule the workload for the smooth passage of vehicles across the border. Continuing with our presentation, we now look at e-justice solutions. In this scenario, Michael has a conflict with a business partner, and he has decided to go to court against them. To enter the claim, Michael enters the commercial court solution from the citizen portal. He's given a choice whether to enter the claim on behalf of himself as a person or as a company representative. He chooses the latter. To get the claim started, he chooses International Timber Limited as the claimant and selects defendant. Advanced exports from the list of companies retrieved directly from the business registry. Next, he is presented with the choice of case types. He selects contract violation and for the claim summary, delinquent payments. 
he chooses to add a proof of claim document to the case to complete the claim info. And now he is once again required to pay a state fee. After entering the credit card information, the card number, expiry date, and security code, and submitting the payment, the claim is now entered into the e-justice system. To see where the claim goes next, we need to log into the system as a court clerk. For the purposes of the demonstration, the login process is simplified. In real life, the clerk would use their ID number-based authentication method. Once logged in, the clerk can see the new claim in the dashboard with the status pending. And upon opening it, the detailed claim information is displayed. To register the case, the clerk starts by selecting a judge. When selecting the judge, she notices that there are red notifications next to the names of some of the judges, which means that they're not best suited for this particular case based on the workload of the judge, expertise, or a potential conflict of interest. As Justice Bert Alfred does not have any conflicts, she goes forward with him as the judge for the case. After registering the case, the clerk continues with scheduling a hearing. She starts by selecting a suitable date and time from the calendar. As we can see, the calendar is synchronized with the judge's calendar. To choose participants in the hearing, the list of shareholders of both companies is directly retrieved from the business registry. She selects all of them, Michael Williams as the claimant, and Anthony Jones and Stephen Ellison representing the defendant. Now that the hearing is registered, notifications are automatically sent to all participants. Moving forward in time, the judge now logs into the system during the hearing. Upon opening the case, now with the status of pre-trial, he can enter the judgment information by selecting the judgment type, in this case, consent judgment. He can also upload any case-related documents. After choosing fine for defendant as a sanction and entering fine of 10,000 euros as the judgment summary, he completes the hearing and effectively the case. As we can see, the process is fully automated and all steps other than the hearing can be handled without the claimant or the defendant ever having to physically come to the courthouse. As a matter of fact, if both parties provide adequate documentation and the case is clear, the judge can render the judgment without the physical hearing. Continuing the demonstration, we now look at real estate transactions. In the real estate section of the Citizen Portal, we can see that Michael already owns one property in Kenya. As he is interested in buying another property, he enters the land registry. After verifying his identity, he can look at his properties or start a search for a property. Upon selecting the property he is interested in from the search results, he is provided with detailed information, such as ownership information, map view of the location, and a street view of the property and surrounding area. In another view, he can look at tax zone information. Once he decides that he is interested in the property and has negotiated the purchase with the current owner, Stephen Ellison, they can complete the transaction in the land registry. Once Stephen Ellison logs into the system and selects the property from the list of his properties, he can start the change ownership process. As they have agreed that the payment for the property is already deposited in an escrow account, he can complete all the steps from his side, and Michael will complete the transaction. He starts the process by selecting Michael Williams as the new owner. Next, he needs to pay the state tax for the transaction, after which he can sign the sales contract. We can see from the status of the transaction that to achieve the completion, Michael needs to sign the contract as well. When Michael logs into the system, he sees a notification of a new transaction. Once he opens the transaction, he can verify that the taxes have been paid and the contract is already signed by Stephen Ellison. After signing the contract, the transaction is completed and he is now the proud owner of the property. The land registry can also be used to manage tax payments for existing properties. We follow the steps of a multiple property owner, Adam Smith, to see the property tax management process. Upon entering the payments section of the registry, Adam can see the payments due and settle the payments directly in the system. He can also view the statistical and historical tax information for his properties. As we have gone through the many different interactions that a person can have with the state, let's look at what it looks like from the other side. Throughout the demonstration, there have been different fee and tax payments made in the system. All those payments accrue to the state budget management system. 
The Budget Management System is a small banking system hosted by the Budget Authority, where the government and public sector institutions act as customers. The system's main objective is to administer and supervise government and public sector spending. In the budget management system, a state official can see various information on the status of budget accrual for the state, such as the budgeted amount, payments received to date, and the comparison of budget accrual versus the plan. Diving deeper into the payments received, the official can see the payments for the border crossing, state fees for the court procedures, and land registry operations already visible in the system. Throughout the demonstration, we have also seen that information is actively exchanged between different systems and registries. For example, the information about persons, their family, medical data, property, and court case-related information. To facilitate the fast and secure exchange of data between systems, a dynamic interoperability platform is used. In Estonia, this system is called XROAD. The same system is available to all countries around the world as the unified exchange platform. Let's look at the visualization of the data moving between the systems. After refreshing the data, we see the latest transactions. On the left, we can see that the information has been exchanged between different services, such as for persons, students, companies, and other services. The services are within different service providers, which in turn are under the jurisdiction of different ministries and organizations. For example, the person registry, business registry, and citizen portal are under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Home Affairs. The e-school system is under the Ministry of Education. Hospital information systems are managed by hospitals, and so on. Below, we can see a visualization of the different services and systems that are exchanging data starting with the citizen portal receiving information about marriages, students, owners of properties, company ownership, schools, and persons. We can also see information from different connected systems. And this presentation has been brought to you by the ICT cluster in cooperation with the Estonian Ministry of Foreign Affairs.